Welcome to this video supporting Chapter 4 of the Absolute Beginners uh, iOS 7 development book for iPhone and iPad developers. In this chapter we're going to take a look at another Hello World style application. We're going to build a very simple application but this time it's one that uses graphics and you're going to see how to use the basically how to use the image view within your Xcode based iPhone application. So from the Welcome to Xcode screen select Create a new Xcode project and then the template chooser that comes up choose a single view application and press next. We're going to give it the name hello world underscore zero three. Organization name can be whatever you like. Company identifier name is usually a reverse domain name style. So if you own ios7developer.com, you'd call it com.ios7developer. And then your application is identified like this. Right now, it really doesn't matter what you put in here. But later on, when it comes to deploying to the App Store, for example, then it will matter. Class prefix, you can just leave empty and devices leave as iPhone. Press next, and then you'll be taken to this screen where you're asked where do you want to store your code. On your desktop is fine, and your source control, just make sure you leave this unchecked because you don't want to use Git right now. So click Create, and then Xcode will create the application for you. I'm just going to resize the screen so that we can see it all in here. And now we can see the application has been created for me. The um, project is here as Hello World 03. <clears throat> the source code is within that. Um, you've investigated main.storyboard and viewcontroller.h and m in the first Hello World application, and we're going to be editing them again in this one. But in addition to this, there's something else we'll be doing in this, and that's putting some supporting files in here. This application is going to use some graphics, and we're going to put the graphics in here as the supporting files. So the graphics I'm using for this application you can download off the web. Um, here you can see geek1.png. It's a rendered 3D image of a young lady. Um, if you prefer to have a male, you can use geek2.png, and he's right there. So all you have to do in order to be able to use these graphics, first of all, you have to download them. So I'll go back to geek1.png. If I right-click on this and say Save Image As, then it'll ask me where do I want to save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Um, in this case, Chrome has noticed that I have geek1.png on here already, so it just gave me the option geek1 bracket 1.png. But in your case, you should just see geek1.png, and then it'll be saved down to your desktop. And when it's saved on your desktop, it'll look something like this. I have geek1.png right here on my desktop. And so the graphic is there. You, in iOS, you get a little peek at the contents of the graphic. What you want to do is to drag that from your desktop and drop it onto Xcode in the supporting files folder. You notice as I drag this little blue line with the circle on the end gives me a preview of where I'd want to drag it. I want to make sure that I drag it and drop it in the supporting files folder like so. And then this dialog will come up and first of all very importantly is this checkbox. Um, it's very important that you have to check this. By default it's probably unchecked but you do want to check it. So copy items into the destination groups folder. The reason for that is that if this is unchecked, then um, Xcode will say, OK, I want that file, and I know that file is on the desktop. So in here, I'm going to create a reference to it on the desktop, but I'm not actually going to have the file. And that's fine, and it will work. But if you move the file off the desktop in future, um, Xcode won't be able to find it. So I say copy items into the destination groups folder. And then what will happen is Xcode will make a copy of the file and put it in the directory supporting files under wherever you stored the Hello World code. So then if I delete this from the desktop, I'm still fine. So make sure that's checked. Make sure that your target Hello World 03 is checked. And then click Finish. And we'll see geek1.png shows up within supporting files. OK, next, what I want to do is edit my storyboard and edit my storyboard to add a graphic to it so that I can draw this geek1.png um, within my actual app. And by the way, the other thing I can do is as I go on here, I can get a preview of geek1.png with the next code, which is very nice. So if I go to main.storyboard, and on main.storyboard, I can see my view controller scene and I can see my view controller. I'm just going to resize Xcode now so we can work with it a little bit more easily. So I'm going to go to view controller scene. I'm going to select my view controller. So I now want to edit my view controller. And I got that nice blue outline showing me that that's what I'm doing. So I want to add an image view control. And an image view control allows me to view an image. So I can scroll through my list here to find it. Or there's a handy dandy little shortcut where I come down here and type image. If I type image, then this list gets filtered to anything with image in it, in which case image view is the one that I want. And you can see image view actually gets listed here. 
So if I drag the image view, and once I hover over my view controller, you can see that the image view automatically resizes itself to fit the view controller, which is, makes it very nice for us if we can drag it. And if I drag it so that the blue dotted lines, I see both horizontal and vertical, I know now that it's fitting both of them and it fits the actual view perfectly. So I can drop it there and see it. So next up, what I want to do is tell it which image to view. Now, Xcode is smart enough to say within my supporting files, I have an image. The .png file is a common file for images like .jpg and stuff like that. So if my image view is selected and I go to my attributes inspector by clicking this little guy on the top right, now if I, uh, my attributes, one of them is the image. If I can drop that down, it says, I know I have an image called geek1.png. I can select that and now the image gets loaded. So now I have added an image view to my view and I've configured that image view with a particular image. And if I were to run my iOS application, I would see that image on my, on my iPhone. But let's, let's make it a little bit more fun and just a little bit more than just rendering an image. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a label to my image. So I come down here to look for my label and I can't find it. There's nothing there because my filter is still set to image. If I delete that, now I'll still I'll see my full set of controls and I'll see that my label is there. Or if I had been off somewhere and I can't find the label, of course I can just start typing label and then I will see label itself. And I don't have to type the full label. I can type something like LAB or LA or L. And so if I, I'm going to do LA, so now we can see everything that matches LA somehow. Uh, so there's a label, there's a segmented control, there's the activity indicator view. Somewhere in this, there's the text LA, so it's matching that. But I'm going to get my label, and I just want to drag my label and drop it somewhere on the image. Like I'll just put it on her chin here or something like that. And I'll drag it out so it takes the full width of the screen, like so. And it's very hard to read because it's black on brown. So I'm going to change the color. I can change the color to maybe red. Yeah. Um, change it to something a little lighter. I'm going to say I'm just going to change it to white. And I'll get rid of that. So now it's a bit more readable. And I'll center it by clicking this icon. So now we can see my label is centered and it's there. OK, so I can change my default text now to something other than label. I'll just leave it as blank, and then it will disappear. Uh, the text will disappear. We can still see the image, but the, um, the label is still there, as we can see from this. So next, what I want to do is add a button. And so again, on here, I don't see button because LA was selected. I can either get rid of them, or I can start typing button. And I can drag my button and drop it somewhere near the top of the screen, like this. And I'm going to make it the full width like so. And I mean, I can change my text here. I'm going to change the text to, are you a geek? And if I want to change the color of the button, I can do so by you know making it something like that. So it's a little bit more readable. So I now have my button up here that I'm going to press. I have the label down here that the answer is going to come in. So what I have to do now, of course, is to write the code so that if I press the button, then I'm going to have an answer. And then the answer will be rendered in that label. So if you recall, the best way of doing this, um, you, well, first of all, we have to set up an action for when the user presses the button. And some code will execute on that action. And then we have to create an outlet so that within that code, we know how to refer to the label. And so the best and easiest way I find to do this is to use the inspector. So the inspector is this guy here in the tuxedo. So if I click on that, we see the viewcontroller.m appears within the inspector. I have the this guy here. I can press this button to just shrink that down so I can see my code. And remember, when we use the inspector to drag and drop to create actions and outlets, we should do it with the .h file, not the .m. So I'm going to make sure I have .h selected here. OK, perfect. And let me just resize this a little so we can see my view a little better. OK, so now we're ready to create our action and we're ready to create our outlet. So I'm going to start by creating the action. To do this, I get the button. And while holding the Control key on the keyboard, I drag, get that nice blue arrow, and I drop it onto the .h file. And this little menu pops up asking what type of connection I want. For the button, I'm going to be, the user is going to be pressing the button, and I'm going to be writing code that responds to that. 
and that action is called an action. So I'm going to make sure that the outlet type or the connection type I'm creating is an action. I'm going to have to give that action a name. So I like to use button click is the name to say, you know, the user has clicked this button. And um, the event, as we discussed in chapter two for clicking a button, the best one to pick is touch up inside. So I'm just going to leave that and press connect. And now we see this IB action BTN click has been created for us. And if we go back to our M file for a moment, we'll see that it has now created like this stub of a function BTN click as well. So now next is my label. So uh, by the way, if it's hard to find the label, you can just use the little tree view on the left here to find it, and then that selects it for me. And for the label, I want to create an outlet. So I'm going to drag and drop again by holding the control key. The connection type is an outlet in this time, in this case, and I'm just going to call it geek label. So again, the point of an outlet is that while I write code, I want to address this label so that I can do something to it. And in order to address this label, I need the code to give this label a name, and that's what an outlet is all about. So the name for this label, as far as code is concerned, is now underscore geek label. OK, so here's my header file. I have my action for my button. I have my outlet for my label. <clears throat> so now I can go in and I can create the code itself to, you know, when the user presses the button to see if this is a geek or not. So what I'm going to do is do something here called writing a condition. So instead of it um, just giving me the same answer each time, I'm going to have sometimes it's going to say yes and sometimes it's going to say no. And as a result, it's just going to keep changing. So let me write the code for this. I'm going to do that in viewcontroller.m. So in order to do this, I'm going to use something called a Boolean. And a Boolean variable is something that's very simple. It just contains true or it contains false. And in Objective-C, you define that using a bool. And I'm just going to use the lowercase bool, like so. And I'm going to call my bool, are you a geek, like so. Now, like I said, it's going to contain true or it's going to contain false. By default, it contains false. Uh, when I first created it, unless I created it and said something like bool or you a geek, are you a geek equals true. So it's going to be a false, uh, which means it's it, it's the same as basically being no. Uh, so if I come down here and now in my function button click, I'm going to say if are you a geek. Now I can say if it equals true, then do something. Um, but just a little shortcut that coders use is that when you put something in brackets like this, the compiler evaluates it. And because I'm not putting anything effectively in the brackets but the name, it's going to evaluate if this is true or false for me. So I don't have to say, is it true or is it false? I can just say, if it. So if it, then this condition will happen when true. And then I can say, else. And that condi this condition will happen when false. So the code is going to say, like, when are you a geek is true, I can do something. And when it's false, I can do something else. So obviously, the first um, condition, the first time we run this application, because we haven't told the computer what are you a geek should be, other than by defining it here, it's going to be false. So I can come in here and say, OK, if are you a geek is false, I can have this come in and say, I don't know, um, my geek label dot text equals something like no way you definitely are a geek and if it's true um, so we're claiming it's true I can say geek label equals yeah you really are a geek oh it doesn't really matter I can put whatever text I like in here of course has anybody spotted the bug yet? We discussed this one in chapter two. Remember, strings in Objective-C have to begin with an at sign. So it's detected that for me. And it's given me the handy dandy little thing here if I want to fix it. I'll just go in and type at here. So now I know that my geek label.text should be, yeah, you really are a geek. But something is wrong. OK, when I run this program, think about this logically. Are you a geek is going to be false. The user is going to press the button. It's going to check if you're a geek. You're not a geek. 
it's going to set the label to no way you definitely are a geek and then it's going to come out of the program we're done now what happens if we press the button again are you a geek is still false the geek label dot text is going to be the same thing we're going to see no change what happens when we press it again it will continue to do that so and it will look like the program isn't actually doing anything because we'll never get into this piece of code so what I can do is two things first of all a simpler one is in here I can say I can now set are you whoops are you a geek whoops it was true when we got in here so now I can set it to false so then the next time we check um, it will be false and ditto it was false when we came in here so I can set it to true like so so then the next time it would be true and as a result this time that way we would toggle uh, so um, so the first time I'll come in are you a geek is false it will say no way you're definitely a geek I'll set are you geek to be true and it'll exit then when the user presses the button, now are you a geek is true. So it'll come in here and say, yeah, you really are a geek, and then set it to false, and then end. So then the next time you press it, now are you a geek is false, it's going to go this way. So as a result, the more I press the button, the more the label is going to change. So shall we run it and take a look? So now we see I have my picture, I have my button, are you a geek? Initially the label was empty, I'll press the button. And it'll say, no way, you definitely are a geek. And of course, I used white text, and the background here is white, so it doesn't look so good. But I'll press it again, and it'll say, yeah, you really are a geek. And I press it, and it changes, and I press it, and it changes again. So that's it for this app. It's a very simple app, just showing you, again, how to use actions and how to use outlets. And this time, we wrote a slightly, sophisticated, uh, slightly more sophisticated code where we change the label to be something different each time instead of just having a hello world, as well as using an image view and showing how to, we can render an image view within our application with this image of a geek in the background. And that's it. Thanks, and I'll see you in Chapter 5.